We got some turnover out west, and it's in the coaching department. Clay Helton is out as the head coach at USC. That you already know. Uh, we were pretty adamant that this was coming the other night. I never do segments like that, and so when I do, I'm very, very sure of something. And it's not like they had called me in advance and let me know, but had a pretty good feeling that was coming. And it reminds me so much of 2016. It's LSU versus Auburn. And we're, we're there. We're in Jordan-Hare Stadium. We're covering the game. And it looks like LSU has just scored a walk-off touchdown. And, oh, my goodness, place goes crazy. We're down there in the LSU corner. And then there's replay. And then replay overturns it. And then Jordan-Hare Stadium goes crazy because Auburn's won the game. There was no time left on the clock. And then Les Miles, the post-game scene was surreal. I've told this story before. I go up the tunnel. I have a feeling he's going to get fired. I go up the tunnel. Joe Oliva, at the time, the AD at LSU was there. He's standing outside the LSU locker room. No one's speaking to each other. Uh, Les Miles, very somber. He looked like he's just off in a trance somewhere. He walks up, goes in the locker room. They do their post-game stuff. He comes back out with his wife. He goes back out on the field. It's empty at that point. Stadium's empty. And he's filming his post-game show. His wife has her back to him, and she's leaned up against one of the wrought iron gates there that surround the field at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Crazy. Really weird to experience that. But... The big takeaway when they did later fire Les Miles that week was not, I can't believe he got fired. It was just as is the case with Clay Helton right now. The same as anyone with a reasonable head on their shoulders is thinking, why'd they fire him two games into the season? What is it you saw so far this year that you didn't already know about Clay Helton? It was the same with Les Miles that year. There was nothing new that was learned about Les Miles in the first four weeks of 2016 that you didn't already know about the guy long before then. So that is a conversation that can be had. But for the purposes of where we're moving forward, I think we can table it for just a second. But it is valid to make that point. So what's possible at USC? Kind of touched on this the other night. Everything's possible at USC. It is hard, as I was talking about, to explain to a 15-year-old or 16 or 17 high school kids, recruits, it's hard to explain to them what life was like in the early to mid-2000s, which is not that long ago, but to them it's an entire lifetime ago. It's hard to explain to someone who has never experienced Southern Cal at full volume what it's like when Southern Cal runs college football. There was a time in the early to mid-2000s, the Pete Carroll era, where not only did you not want to play USC, you really got scared that they were going to totally embarrass you as a program and set you back as a program. And it, it was with good reason. There was a lot of merit behind that reputation because they did it. And they were the most feared program in America. And here's the other fun part. The reason I laugh at all these excuses that are made in the modern day about the lack of enthusiasm on the West Coast. The Coliseum was full, and those beaches were out there, and the nightlife was out there, and the Hollywood scene and the entire L.A. entertainment scene was out there. All the stuff they tell you is distracting. These days, it was already there. No one cared. The hottest ticket in town was to be on the sideline at the Coliseum on a Saturday night or a Saturday afternoon. You had folks who couldn't even spell. Uh, they couldn't tell you four starters on the team, but they were there because that was where the place to be was, and the Coliseum would be packed, and it could be again. It's like James Earl Jones, everything it once was and could be again. Well, that's USC. Like his, his speech in Field of Dreams, you can make it about USC too. However, that's what's possible. I also think some other context here is very important, and that is to understand what has changed. What is USC as a job? It's a still a premier job. It's still a very sought-after job. It's just that the room's a little more crowded. Back then, if you were to tell someone Pete Carroll's about to leave, uh, and you looked around the country, you would say, what other jobs are more coveted than USC? I and mean, you would have been able to easily count them on one hand and not even fill up the hand. Well, these days, there are, I got, I got five fingers on my hand, I don't know about you, there are that many programs in the SEC that are more coveted by a lot of people than the Southern Cal job. If you don't believe me, well, ask some of them, because that's where I got the opinion from. But number two, here's what I was told by someone in the agent world when this news broke because I wanted to know about a timeline. Everyone's putting their hot board out. Everyone's putting out their list of candidates. And so naturally you want to know, well, they've made the move away from Clay Helton. So after you fire a coach, naturally the next question is, or how long is it going to take to get a new guy in here? And where is he going to come from? Well, I was told by someone in that agent world, pump the brakes. You, you can go ahead and take your time. I know you have a show to do. Go ahead and take your time. You can go ahead and talk about matchups and predictions. This isn't going to happen for a while, and I'm going to tell you why. 
there is a widely held belief in our industry, this is the agent talking, that the LSU job is going to come open. This is his opinion. This is not me talking, so direct your hate mail elsewhere. And no one in our world and no one in the coaching world worth their salt is going to make a move before we understand how the market's going to react if and when that LSU job comes open. That's part one. So even if you don't want the LSU job, you sit back and wait because you leverage more money out of USC and it's just better for more jobs to be open if you're a candidate. But part B is there are a ton of people who would want that LSU job over the USC job. And we would not have said that in the early 2000s. And that is what has changed. USC is still a premier job. But LSU, Texas A&M, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, all these jobs are more coveted today for the average available candidate than the USC job is. That SEC sticker already means a lot. In the next 10 to 15 years of this sport's existence, it will mean infinitely more. And so the health of that conference and that TV, all the TV money, you, I don't have to explain it to you. You know what it's, what it's about. Uh, you got more competition is what I'm saying. So Georgia and Alabama and Florida, they're not coming open. LSU may come open. So that's another dynamic to consider. But what needs to happen? Well, we got to hire a guy. I got that. What, what, who do you need to hire? The right candidate. Well, you're right about that. But let's hold off in just a second if we can. This is fresh news. It's only been 48 hours or so. Let's ask ourselves, what does the right candidate at USC look like? What does it feel like? And I think sometimes programs go about this backwards. I think sometimes when there's a job opening, programs and athletic departments, they immediately hire search firms to do the job they're supposed to do. And then they compile a list of candidates. And what we're looking at is we're looking at wins and losses. And we're looking at average recruiting rankings. And we're looking at a resume. And there's no life on it. There's no personality on it. There's no culture on it. The intangibles, for instance, that Sam Pittman is leveraging in order to win at Arkansas, we're not even considering in a lot of cases. I hope Southern Cal plays this differently. I hope before Southern Cal ever goes out and finds Luke Fickle or find any of these number of names that are being thrown around, what I hope they can do is they can look in the mirror and they can answer this question. What is USC? What is Southern Cal? Because the answer is that the, the blank that you fill in there is totally different than the blank you would fill in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or you would fill in Columbus, Ohio. That's culture. It's totally different. That's one of the beautiful things about this sport. But that also means some candidates are more uniquely cut out for your job than others are. It's not always how much they've won in one particular location. Maybe they were more cut out for that place than they were for you. How many times have you seen in the past a guy win at one place and then he gets what we think to be a promotion, a better job, and he doesn't win and you just can't figure out why? Why is this guy not winning? It looked like a grand slam hire. He probably wasn't a culture fit. That's probably what it was. So USC, before they go out and they hire anyone, and before they even compile a list of candidates, what I hope, if they're doing things right, is they can accurately answer the question, what is USC? And then once they fill that blank in, then you start to cast your net. And you got to define the principles and values and characteristics. What are those intangibles and tangibles that you're looking for in a person? And then you start to compile that list, and you never go to a single website, you never open a single newspaper. You never turn on a single podcast or talk radio show and listen to anyone else's opinion. You define your characteristics, and then you go compile the list of candidates, and you interview them, and you let the chips fall where they may. But in order to do that, you got to have decision makers in the room that can answer the question that started all this, and that is, what is USC? The biggest fear for any Trojan fan right now is the folks running the ship out there don't know the answer to that question. The fan base does. The fan base always knows the answer. Sometimes you got people that are so far detached from the ground level where the real fans live that they can't answer. And as a result, they are ill qualified to make the decisions that they are tasked with making. So this is hypothetical. I'm not telling you this is my belief about where the USC job search is going. I'm telling you I hope it goes the right way. Monitor this. We will obviously be talking about this a lot. What did I, uh, oh, oh, hey, here's one more point. Remember, you don't get money and you don't get trophies for winning press conferences. Yes, when you're interviewing a candidate, please don't think about how cool the press conference will be. Please don't do that. Uh, that is a one-way ticket out the door for you and your coach.